Hey guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. You are watching Newbie Tuesday. We've got a Zerg sent in replay today. So this came from the StarCraft Facebook group. I told you guys about it last week. Link in the description if you want to check that out. We've got some awesome players in there, including some you might recognize like Tempo and Nero, as well as a lot of other cool guys who maybe you won't, but you can make friends. That's for damn sure. Anyways, here on the top left-hand side, it is the original sender of the replay he is a testament a legacy to the fact that old people can still play video games it's zerg herd and here on the bottom a right hand side of odyssey ladder edition and the blue brotoss trunks it's juicy kev all right so we've got a fairly uh standard openers from both players there's a little bit of poking here with a probe no big deal and what we're really looking for is to see what happens once Metabolic Boost starts. Looks like Zerg Herd has forgotten to start Metabolic Boost. There we go. And he's not pulling off, so we will probably see a little bit of a faster layer tech here. Um, I really urge more Zergs, especially in this matchup, to consider pulling these three and just sending them directly to the natural. This will give them more minerals to make more drones, more queens, more creep spread. Uh, it really begins to snowball. The uh, queens are very, very strong early game especially defensively but we'll see how this game progresses in any case uh yeah there's not really that much to say um keeping an eye on his supply blocks and everything uh i'm noticing that he's at 32 have not seen an overlord here in quite some time he's floating a little bit uh so yeah let's go ahead and see that overlord would love to see an inject right here and we've got Overlord Speed going to be coming along here shortly as well. Still no inject. 50 uh, energy now saved up. That's 25 seconds. Yep, there we go. Boom. And maybe we can get some creeps red with that extra energy. Uh, got one additional queen coming, but we could have an additional queen and a third base about 45 seconds sooner had we pulled from Metabolic Boost. Or pulled from gas after metabolic boost rather anyways overlord does get a decent read here on a couple extra gateways Pylon overcharge is forced there and uh, That means three gates with uh, warp gate technology gonna be finishing up third base makes a decent target But the robo bay is uh, is coming up pretty quickly So we'll probably see some immortals and kind of some kind of defensive type play until the immortals come up Ling's gonna be swinging. Yeah, he's just doing a little bit of light harassment now this map in particular, let's just pause this real quick, um, it's brutal. So in like, against Terran, this is a pretty good jump up path for like Reapers, but this is a great um, drop point for all races. Now you can see Ling's getting dropped into Protoss Naturals in this little area. That's very, very powerful great thing to do like right in here but warp prisms are super powerful as well because they can uh drop here get the third swing up here boom uh escape path over here onto like the, the water which is super pretty check this out this is oh my god so pretty guys but uh anyways uh there's all this area that they can hide in so it's very important to have some kind of units patrolling around here to scout and repel uh, any kind of attacks like that. Now, if we see any harassment, we can delve deeper into that, but Nero has a great thing about it. Now, these four overlords could be split up a little bit better and really be scouting for any kind of harassment. That would be great to see. Also, love to see Lings on the Zelnaga Towers. Both players a little bit floaty. Kev currently floating quite a bit. Anyways, the Roach Warren is completing. We saw uh, someone skipping that last week, and uh, it's good to see some... Um, that mistake getting getting remedied uh, in the, uh, the current play styles. Now we've got uh, one one uh, gas miner short. So three forges in production here for Kev. I don't know if this is a mistake. Typically two max. You don't really have the gas to uh, invest that heavily, but he may be going all in off some type of robo gateway uh, composition because here you're at five minutes. We still don't have a third base from him. So maybe if he's trying to get one, one, one and hit like as that completes, not really sure what his plan is there. Layer just now starting five and a half minutes. 
A lot of energy on these queens. We could definitely see some better creep spread. Creep spread, good for connecting your bases, but also extending outward from your bases because as soon as they hit the creep spread, you have an advantage. You can get a better concave, better surrounds, better multi uh, angle attacks, but also you just have the ability to see your opponent, um, which is which is always an added benefit. Now we've got uh, three gas, uh, well, two of them just completed one additional one in production. So it looks like we'll see uh, some kind of like maybe Muta play. I, I wouldn't expect Hydras off um, off three bases with all six gas taken. But I don't know if Mutas are the right choice here. Uh, there's a lot of gateways. Um, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> well, he's got the 1 1 upgrades coming uh, for, for ranged. Oh, okay. Fourth base now taken for Zerg Herd. And it looks like we've got a little bit of a move out here by uh, by Kev. We'll see, uh, see how this goes for him. Now he's floating quite a bit, and you see he's actually just now starting five additional gateways. Think about if the gateways had been started 30 seconds ago, or if he maybe moved out just a little bit later. I don't know if this was like the best time to do the gateways. Because he's already floating a little bit, he's even supply blocked. He's not building, um, building pylons. So I don't know. Maybe get fewer gateways earlier. I don't know. But the expenditure rate it looks like this is not going to work out to to his advantage. He's just going to be be kind of brute forcing this. There's no finesse. Okay, stalkers and sentries swing in here. Going to be bruising. The, uh, the queens and the roaches here and we've got a drop right here so let's pause this and let's talk about them. we do have hydralisks on the field Nero talks about this quite a bit taking like four hydras and just patrolling around your base like maybe take uh, one or two of them patrol this area the other two could patrol this area and since this is such a wide open map maybe take two more and patrol this area just so like the, this back exposed flank isn't isn't vulnerable and sure um a dedicated attack where like there's already a depth loaded up in the warp prism and then he warps in some more that might repel like the the hydras but it's going to buy you enough time to get in position and get some of your reinforcements there to deal with the attack so just something to consider And back to this attack, some decent transfuses going off. Uh, sentries falling, and that's really the backbone. Stalkers do a lot of damage, but they're kind of glass cannons in their own right. And behind this, we've got the Zealots uh, actually choosing to take out Creep Tumors instead of participate in this fight. He could actually have killed off most of these queens uh, had the Zealots been there to soak up some of this damage. Now, one of these Stalkers not getting all the... Uh, attacking that he wants so not the best control here by Kev but his macro back at home is also slipping 1300 minerals almost 900 gas he does have zealot legs in production though which is uh are completing and we see 17 worker advantage 16 15 it's falling just a little bit advantage right now for zerg herd but while all this is happening the main mineral line completely exposed we have one spine crawler in production but it's actually not going to get started uh and we've got some more zealots being warped in this is not looking good for zerg herd again those hydralisks would have helped so freaking much um in any case we've got this third base swinging for kev a fourth base is also um down for zerg herd but it's not currently mining what he could have done is pulled all these workers and sent them there to mine instead yeah they lose some mining time but at least they would still be alive right now he is behind on workers and it's not looking good for our zerg friend but the roaches and the hydras are swinging in here to deal with the zealots but this exposes the third base to this two stalker attack and two stalkers are going to be one queen queen might get a kill on this one stalker but nope that is not going to be the case these hydras are going to be popping as well but the hydras are on a just move command the drones getting pulled off of this base as well but this is only to two stalkers actually he could have totally surrounded those stalkers with the drones and killed those off but either way roaches and hydras are now here to deal with it and these drones have a home right here at this lovely little base and we can send some more drones over here to deal with this but again this is still very exposed just take these hydras right here and boom patrol spread these out a little bit more like right along this line maybe even cut it right along here all kinds of options but wherever you're gonna cut it make sure you've got enough room to react so 
Sorry guys, I've been listening to a lot of tempo lately. Anyways, we've got Zerg Herd moving um, up here into the, uh, the the natural of Kev. Now Kev's main army just going to plow right on through, use this as an opportunity to go attack. So this is going to turn into a, a base race situation and Pylon Overcharge is going to be pretty powerful. Could have probably killed that off a little bit sooner, but no real big deal. There. Is there a drone in this army? Why is there, why is there a drone in this army? Oh my god. Oh my god. Hero drone, man. Hero drone. Anyways, here at this, uh, what, I think this was the third base for Zerg Herd. Uh, the Stalker Zealot army doing a lot of damage but he's getting caught up here on the third base instead of uh trying to get in here to the mineral lines and taking out really the heart of the zerg there's uh some hydralists here to defend these uh hydras are glass cannons but the zealot ai totally butchering yeah those uh zealots didn't even attack the hydralists anyways uh zealots are pretty powerful and very very beefy they're taking a lot of the damage while the stalkers are killing off the hydralists only a few hydralists are left going to be moving the spore caller directly into the stalker I guess it's just going to work as a little bit of a meat shield, but the stalkers are not going to fall for it. Neither are those zealots who are just charging right on past. Actually, oh, okay, yeah, yep, just running right on past. This is not looking good. But on the other side of the map, we've got these forges. Those extra forges he made it doesn't really matter. We've got the one one upgrades. I guess that's what he was going for with those. But anyways, uh, this is this is a pretty gutted Protoss base, and uh, this is a pretty gutted. Zerg main as well. It looks like the lair was the main target instead of this technology. The Hydra Den really should have been the first target than the spawning pool because those are the units that uh, the Zerg needs to make to defend this attack. Always kill your opponent's ability to, to defend and then go for the other targets, which we did see out of the Zerg opponent who killed off those pylons, so therefore these gateways could not be attacking. We've got more gateways in production, some extra pylons, but these are still only two pylons and they're powering everything, not only the gateways, but those photon cannons as well. Now, interesting tactic that, well, you know, Zerg Herd's definitely not doing because his army's parked right here, but he could take some of these Hydralisks Maybe park a couple of them here, but even more importantly, a couple of them here. And really make this mineral line completely useless. The rest of his army could swing through here and, you know, take out this pylon. Run past all these cannons, take out this pylon, and then boom, this base is completely shut down. And uh, there's really nothing that Kev would be able to do about it. In fact, he may not even have to worry about the pylons because these probes could just run straight into the hydralis directly. Uh, it, it would be interesting to see how that played out, but anyways, we've got a ninja base over here. I don't think it's going to matter because the Zerg Herd has a base there, and uh, this is definitely going to be Zerg Herd's side of the map. So I would say this game's pretty much won in the Zerg favor. There's not a much left for Kev as far as like critical base infrastructure. The real key takeaways of this game, I think, are just um, defending multi-pronged harassment and being attacked from multiple different angles. Uh, key things would be looking into Neuro, what Neuro has to say about uh, having the Hydralisk kind of patrolling. Let's see what he has to say about, like particularly on this map. If I can remember to, I'll try and tag him in this video uh on on the the facebook group i know he's part of the group so maybe i'll take a look at it and give some feedback in any case um other than that just smart decision making having like at least one spine crawler in key mineral lines like especially like where your technology is man imagine this if you lose your main and like your opponent had have gone for the spawning pool and the hydra den you might have lost that game so having a spine crawler there to just buy you more time i think is a really important decision even if you already have the hydra list there anyways we'll see what nero has to say about this and uh maybe you guys can leave some um feedback in the comments either on facebook or the comments on this uh video on youtube that helps out a lot like and share this video share it with your friends um and make sure you guys are sending in replays. My email is cheesyshaft at gmail.com. Link is in the description. Please, uh, you know, um, tune in to us on Twitter because we are releasing updates on our latest event that is going to be Ryung vs. Classic in an epic TVP for the centuries. That's going to be June 3rd, guys, but updates are on Twitter. We are at PolygonSC2. That is Polygon Gaming, and I am the only Shaft. See you next time.
If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.